Hi everyone, and welcome to this video where I'm going to show you how you can use Passport with Nunchuck in a single signature setup. Nunchuck is a mobile wallet software that can be downloaded from the Google Play and iOS app stores. Nunchuck supports all major hardware wallets and offers both DIY, collaborative and assisted multi-signature offerings, the latter being a paid service with additional support benefits. Nunchuck also offers a testnet mode, so you can carry out all of the following steps with Passport set to testnet so that you can practice your self-custody setup using the Nunchuk app without fear of losing any real value. At the end of this video, you'll know how to connect Passport with Nunchuk, receive a transaction via Nunchuk directly into your Passport, and then how to spend Bitcoin from your Passport using Nunchuk as the coordinator. In this setup, Nunchuk connects to the blockchain to monitor the addresses controlled by your Passport to show you your Bitcoin balance. Nunchuk can also construct spend transactions for Passport to authorize. As always, your all important private keys remain firmly on Passport, your secure and offline device. So this video assumes that you've already got your Passport set up and initiated, but if you haven't done that yet, head back to our setup guide and you can learn how to do that. So once you have Nunchuk downloaded and installed on your phone, the first screen you'll see is the login page. Now there's multiple ways in which you can log into Nunchuk. You can sign up with an email address and set a password. Uh, you can also sign in with a primary key, which essentially allows you to sign in with your passport device or any other hardware wallet, where it would use uh, one of the secrets from the device as a username so that you can sign in uh, without providing any personal details. Or you can continue as a guest so that you can sign in without providing any information whatsoever. And in this setup, all of the data is stored locally on your phone, so you're responsible for backing that up. The guest mode is the one that I'm going to demonstrate today, but the basic functionality of what I'm about to demonstrate is the same regardless of how you choose to sign into the app. So I'm going to tap continue as guest. So here we have the main sort of wallet screen where we have the option to add wallets and keys. So the first step is to add a key. So I'm going to click the plus. Then I'm going to choose add air gapped key. And there's an appropriate reminder there that if you are going to use Nunchuk with Passport and you have a passphrase protected wallet, that the passphrase needs to be entered on Passport before you take the following steps. So I'm going to give this key a name and I'm just going to call it Passport. And then I'm going to choose Scan QR, which is going to open the camera on my phone. And then over on Passport, I'm going to navigate to the account that I want to pair with Nunchuk. And then I'm going to head down to Manage Account, Connect Wallet, scroll down to Nunchuk. This video, we're demonstrating single signature. And I'm going to opt to pair via QR code. Passport then says, next, scan the QR code on the following screen into Nunchuk. And Passport is then going to show its own animated QR code series, which is the information required for Nunchuk to be able to monitor all of Passport's addresses and to be able to construct transactions. So I'm just going to scan that with my phone. Once it's scanned, Nunchuk is going to ask which path we want to use. This is almost always going to be the top one, m-84h. This represents native SegWit so that you can interact with addresses that start with BC1Q. Nunchuk then gives us a summary of the key details. It's crucial that you don't edit any of these. Once you're happy with the name that you've supplied, you can press add key. And there we go, we have now added our passport key to Nunchuk and we can see a summary of that on the main screen. We also have the wallet XFP, which is the short fingerprint identifier for our wallet. And you can check that this matches Passport via the About screen, which can be found in the settings. So now that we've added the key, the next step is to create our single signature wallet. So next to Wallets, I'm going to tap the plus. And then I'm going to choose Create New Wallet. I'm going to give this wallet a name. So I'm going to call it Passport Single Signature. I don't need to customize the address type because the default is native SegWit and I don't need to customize the wallet type. So I'm going to tap continue. 
Now we're at the wallet configuration screen where we want to choose which keys we want to form part of this wallet. As this is a single signature, we only want to include a single key, which is the one we just added from Passport. And then I'm going to tap continue. So now we're at the wallet review screen. We've got the wallet name, the configuration, the wallet type and the address type. Again, once you're happy with all of that information, you can press continue. Next Nunchuck is going to offer for you to save locally your BSMS file, which is a wallet backup format. So if you tap on save wallet configuration, that will save a .bsms file, which you can save on your phone storage, or you can also store that on a USB stick or an SD card if you'd like. Okay, so that's our wallet created. We can tap on it. And if this is a wallet that has been used before, then Nunchuck will slowly start to populate all of your historical transactions. But if this is the first time that you're using the paired account, of course it will be empty and you will not see any historical transactions. So I'm just going to wait for my transaction history to load before we move on and I'll show you how you can receive Bitcoin via Nunchuck into your Passport. So the final step of the wallet connection, as you can see on Passport, it says it wants to check that the wallet connected correctly. On the next page, scan a receive address from Nunchuck. That's going to open Passport's camera. So I'm just going to open the wallet in Nunchuck and then tap receive. And then I can scan that QR code being displayed by Nunchuck. And Passport's going to search its own list of internal addresses to check that Nunchuck is actually showing an address that Passport controls. Once the search is complete, we'll get a green check mark on Passport and that will confirm that the wallet is paired successfully and that we are good to go in terms of receiving and sending Bitcoin from this wallet. And there we go, we've got that green check mark and the connection is complete. Receiving Bitcoin via Nunchuck is super simple. All you need to do is open the wallet by tapping on it. Then tap receive and Nunchuck will surface the next unused address from your Passport wallet. Each time that Nunchuck recognizes there's a transaction been received to the address shown, it will automatically surface a brand new address that is also controlled by your passport. This is done to preserve your privacy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this address and share it with another wallet. And then I will send some sats into this wallet. And once we've done that, I will come back and show you how we can do a spend transaction. Okay, so we now have one confirmation on that transaction. So we are ready to make a spend transaction. So here's what that flow looks like. We're going to tap on send. I'm going to enter the amount that I want to send. That could be in Bitcoin or you can switch to US dollars. Or you also have on the left hand side the option to send all, which will send the entire account balance. For the purposes of this transaction, I'm just going to send a small amount. Then I'm going to tap continue. Next, I'm going to tap the QR icon in the top right hand corner and scan the address from the wallet that I want to send to. I then have the option to add a private note, which is a note to myself for the purpose of the transaction, which can be useful for accounting purposes and also for privacy when making future spends. Next, I have the option to customize my fee settings so I can tap manual fee rate and enter the fee rate that I would like to send the transaction at. And as this is a demonstration, I'm just going to use the lowest possible free fee rate of one sat per byte. The total fee will then be shown at the top of the screen and also the total amount to be sent. Once I'm happy with those details, I can tap continue. Then we have a final confirmation screen with all of the details of the transaction. Once I'm happy with those, I can tap confirm and create transaction. So we now have our unsigned transaction in Nunchuck ready for Passport to authorize. So to do that, I'm gonna tap on sign and then I'm gonna choose export to Passport. Nunchuck is then gonna show an animated QR code series which represents the unsigned transaction ready to be scanned 
by Passport. So over on Passport, I'm going to tap Sign with QR Code. And then I'm going to scan the QR codes being displayed by Nunchuck. Passport's going to read that information and then display it to us. So it's going to show the amount being sent, the destination address, the change amount and the change address, which is going back to our Passport wallet. Then it's going to show the network fee. And finally, it will ask if we would like to sign the transaction. Once it's signed the transaction, Passport will then display its own QR code series, which represents the signed version of the PSBT, ready to be scanned by Nunchuck. So over on Nunchuck, I'm going to choose Import Signature, which is going to open the camera on my phone, and I can then scan the QR codes being displayed by Passport. And once Nunchuck has read the QR codes being displayed by Passport, you can see that we have a successful signature message on Nunchuck and we are ready to broadcast the transaction. And that's it. Transaction has been broadcast as you can see at the top of the list and it is pending a confirmation by the Bitcoin network.